I'm going to try to prop it back up today. And at some point, they're not going to, they're not going to be able to do it. It's Friday, May 6, 2022, coming to you from Lake Gunnersville, Alabama. It's beautiful, beautiful lake. It's huge, beautiful houses all along the lake. Just gorgeous. Uh, we're going to be heading a little farther north uh, up to Huntsville. Going to check out the northern part of Alabama and then work our way back down. But it's been really, really cool, beautiful. I probably drove six, seven hundred miles through the state yesterday. And just adjust this for a second. And I've never driven so, through so many green prairies, so many trees. You talk about green, it's another world out here. Really, really unbelievable. And uh, I want to just give a shout out to Lonnie, the tow truck driver. Uh, while we were having uh, dinner last night at a little barbecue joint, uh, he was kind enough to uh, talk with us and, and uh, uh, share some information on Alabama. So Lonnie, thank you so much. Hope all is well. But without further ado, let's get into what's happening right now. It's very early in the morning. The uh, markets are not open. Dow Jones futures were just down over 500 points, rebounded a little bit to about 425 points down in the red. Um, I don't know, I don't give financial advice, but if you're in, the, in these markets, this may be a good time to think about maybe getting out or getting some of it out. And that's not financial advice. But I was watching a video of Grant Cardone this morning. Uh, he's uh, shot this video in, in Malibu, and he was commenting on the amount of businesses, stores, and retailers in Malibu who have shuttered. They're gone. And uh, that's not a good sign, especially when you're seeing this happening in luxury areas like Malibu. We, um, I think, are getting deeper into a Great Depression, ladies and gentlemen. You know, there's people saying that we're heading into a depression. There's people saying that we'll be in a depression next year, the year after. I think if you statistically look at what's happening right now, and by the way, 10 years sitting at 3.126% this morning. Uh, but if you look at some of the stats, I think we're in a depression right now. 43 plus million people are on food stamps here in the U.S. Now, we used to call those soup lines, soup kitchens, 43 million people. Imagine if you saw 43 million people standing in line for food. That would blow away anything we saw back in the Great Depression. $31 trillion of debt, household debt, all-time high, inflation nearing 20%. Most Americans have absolutely zero savings. Uh, manufacturing, we're, we're getting crushed uh, with this trade deficit. Uh, the trade deficit now yearly uh, is over a trillion dollars. Uh, and we have probably one of the most unhealthy uh, generational groups of people uh, in, that we've ever seen in this country. So uh, I, I would say that, and that's just what I can think of off the top of my head, but I would say that looking at, at, at some of the, the, the statistics, we are already in a Great Depression. Now, going back to this market yesterday, Dow Jones absolutely destroyed uh, down over a thousand points. So it looked like uh, yesterday the markets digested uh, this rate hike. Question is, what happens today? As, as I'm making this video very early, markets are not open. So when you watch this, I'll have no idea while I'm driving um, exactly where we're at because I'm going to be tied up today. But you'll be watching this. But now, are we going to see a second day of this bloodbath, or are they going to try and get this thing under control? And I think you have to bring in the plunge protection team. They have to artificially try to get this thing under control because there's no good news. Um, uh, there is absolutely no good news. E-commerce stocks plummeted yesterday as consumers pull back on online spending. There's no more free money. They can talk about job creation, these new jobs, but they're not talking about the four and a half million people who quit their jobs, the 200,000 jobless claims reported yesterday. Uh, they're not talking uh, about the China lockdowns. Factories are closed. Uh, what does this mean for US stores that can't get shipments from China? Also, the real estate market in China, people cannot go out physically and buy property in China right now. And so you, you look at the um, massive real estate development companies in China, how many U.S. companies and U.S. investors are invested in these companies, and people can't even go and buy real estate at this point. And again, how are, are these stores going to operate if those ships uh, begin to not show up on the West Coast and East Coast? 
Uh, housing market on the verge of collapse. Zillow plunged 13% yesterday uh, after a dismal outlook stoked investor fears that rising rates will spark the next crash in the U.S. housing market. They can bring in the plunge protection team today. They can buy it all up. They can pull another magic trick uh, again today. But at the end of the day, they're not going to stop the housing uh, collapse. They're not going to stop this economic collapse. Uh, they're not going to stop the shortages. They're not going to stop the lockdowns in China. This is clearly out of their hands now. And we're about to see today, uh, from here on out, if stocks and housing will go up forever. And I don't think that's going to happen, ladies and gentlemen. So make sure that you are preparing the best that you can. Uh, I think this time, at this time, you need to have a skill set. You need to have assets. You need to be putting cash away. You need to be getting ready for a massive storm. Uh, the hedge yesterday, 34% of retailers could not make rent in April. That's up 6% from February. Think of, so Grant Cardone today or, or uh, this morning uh, in, in Malibu, uh, talking about the vacancy rate in Malibu. Well, here you could have it. 34% of retailers could not make rent in April. Now, they gave a few reasons why they couldn't make rent. They said it was inflation, gas prices, supply chain issues, labor shortages, uh, reduced uh, 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 reserves, or excuse me, reduced revenue. And when I read some of, some of these uh, reasonings of why these retailers are closing, when does this begin to hit the average household and begin to affect mortgage payments, mortgage defaults? Because uh, if gas prices continue to go up, if inflation goes up, uh, if there's reduced uh, revenue, uh, this is going to affect the housing market because people have to pay that monthly mortgage payment. It's going to affect rental because people got to pay the rent payment. So this is coming very soon to other markets. The hedge, Jim Rickards, collapse is happening before your eyes. I've said this for a very, very long time. We are witnessing this collapse right before our very eyes. It's been going on for a couple years now, and people have been ruling it out, denying it, ignoring it, while it's been happening right before their very eyes. You've seen the comments down below over the past couple years. When's it gonna happen? When's it gonna happen? Oh, I've been talking about this for years and years. It's been happening daily for the last at least three years. You could go back to 2008 and say it started there, but this has been going on and on. Go back to the retail apocalypse, go back to the repo market. Um, this this is nothing new. Uh, this has all been propped up. They're gonna try to prop it back up today. And at some point, they're not gonna they're not gonna be able to do it. Also, that we uh, something that we really have to be aware of here, and pardon pardon the noise for cleaning up the hotel here. Russia linking gold to the ruble. What does this mean? This this to me is is extremely uh, concerning to the U.S. dollar, to your standard of living, to, to uh, the purchasing price of anything. Uh, Russia linking gold to the ruble. China, Saudi Arabia discussing the prospect of paying for oil in yuan. Israel consider taking yuan uh, in exchange for high tech. High-tech exports. Countries are continuing uh, to look at other options uh, and other payment systems to avoid U.S. sanctions. And so, to me, this is very threatening to the dollar, uh, to our standard of living, to the future of this country. And most people are unaware. And, and even here in Alabama, as nice as the people are, they have no idea what is happening. Uh, on the East Coast or the West Coast. They are in their own little bubble for the most part. Uh, but speaking with Lonnie yesterday, he was very, very awake. So there are people awake, but for the most part, even people here will say the people who are awake will say that people here are in a bubble. And they don't, they have no idea what's happening to my home state in California. They have absolutely no idea. You know, it's, it's quiet here, it's very laid back. It's a very slow type of living here. And it's very, very nice, I must say. But they have no idea uh, what is happening and what possibly could be coming here. Look, what happens in the West always heads east. So um, I hope it doesn't. But uh, most people are unaware of, of the real dangers out there. But we have a real danger with what's happening 
uh, with these payment systems, what's happening now with other uh, currencies that will compete against the dollar, uh, a, a gold-backed ruble, uh, a lot of things happening that most people are not prepared for. This is why you must own real assets like gold and silver. There, Jim Rickard said this, there is not one global currency that can replace the dollar, but there is one monetary asset that could, and that is gold. Gold is physical, it can't be hacked, it can't be tracked, it is the best financial protection you can have, and I totally agree with that 100%. And so uh, I just wanted to uh, report in uh, with everybody from the beautiful state of Alabama. People have been very, very, very nice to us. And uh, just absolutely beautiful. I mean, to sit here in the morning, uh, we had a really nice thunderstorm last night, and it's getting a little dark here. I apologize, but there is a, another thunderstorm coming in. Uh, so I'm going to leave it there today. We've got to hit the road. We've got hundreds of miles to cover today. Again, looking at all options to get out of California, yeah. you have, have the means and the ability to relocate to a safer place. Uh, this is probably the time to start looking at doing something because uh, when things really break apart here, who knows what we're going to see. It's going to really be chaotic. So um, be protecting yourself uh, physically, spiritually, and financially. Have a wonderful day. So as I wrap it up uh, uh, today, uh, again, just going back to this market volatility, we've never seen this type of volatility. It is a warning sign that something is very, very wrong and that we're going to see more extreme chaotic volatility and it is going to cause serious, serious trouble for business. Uh, it's going to cause serious trouble for the consumer and really the entire country, uh, every which way um, you look at it. So. Be protecting yourself the best that you can, and if you can't relocate, like most people can't understand that, um, but do what you can, because doing nothing will guarantee that you fail. God bless.